That is a carburetor from a 1982 XJ750. One of the problems with these carburetors, if it does not have an air box, then it'll suck in too much air and won't run properly. That's a bunch of PVC pipe from Menards, and we're going to create an aftermarket air box. So this is a rough guesstimate on how everything is going to sit, but we're going to cut a little off on each side, try to get it measured down, cut a little on each, and then we're going to get it together to fit it just right. So all the areas that are, are covered in black, we cut and yeet away. Now that all of these are cut out of the way, we just need to create connectors between these four pipes. So out with the old, and in with the new. Now it's time for a dry fitment. So after a dry fitment, now we take everything back apart and then we glue everything together. Now that it's all apart, we take a tub of towels and we clean it all up to remove any more grease, dirt, and grime. Now that everything is all cleaned, we use PVC glue and we glue it together. Now, after it's all glued together, we let it sit and then we prep the rubbers so we have boots for all four carburetors. Now, we have all four rubber boots on the carbs. Now, we try the full fit and here we go. Now, the boots don't quite line up, so I have to figure something out because the boots that I got were way too long. When I try to measure them down, I cut them really sloppily. But now, all I'm going to have to do is scuff this up i'm gonna paint it black get different boots and i do have two new filters that are going to go on here and then we'll try it out i'll see you in the next one that is my carburetor from a 1982 yamaha xj 750. that is my homemade air box out of pvc pipe right i had multiple people comment and say this right above that i say only one in four will get the same fuel and two and three will get different fuel because this is a straight in and then this has to go around a 90 degree bend so we went back to menard got more parts and we're gonna make another one a different kind and then we're gonna try both of them out these are our new parts and how we're gonna set them up is just like a car intake where every single one has to go around a 90 degree bend and we're only gonna have one inlet instead of the two inlets also went to harbor freight and got this pvc cutter Time to cut off the X. Now that we have all of our PVC cut, we're gonna cut inserts to go in between each of these and then test them out. All right, with all these cut out, now we're gonna try everything together as a dry fit. All right, and here is the dry fitment. And when we put it up, uh, it looks so, it looks nice. It I, actually looks good. Now it's time to take it back apart, clean it, and then glue it together. All cleaned up with a tub of towels. Now it's time for the glue. All right, both intakes are all done up and put together. Both of them will get paint jobs. But which one do you guys think will work better? Do you think the two into four? Or do you think the one into four will work better? The more I think about it, I think the one into four will work. But I'm not sure. We'll try it out. We'll try both of them. This one might be too restrictive. This one might not be restrictive as enough. This is my 1982 Yamaha XJ750, and this is the carburetor with the aftermarket air box that I made out of PVC pipe. And today, we're going to do a bunch of little stuff for it. But before we start that... Yes, she runs! There's a couple other little things that we're going to change, like there's a brake line over here that's leaking. We're going to change the line, change the crush washers. We're going to take the exhaust off, and we're going to put on some chrome tips just to make it look a little nicer. And then we're going to change out these strut bars that make it a hard tail, and we have aftermarket air ride shocks to make it a little softer ride. We loosen that up, then we give it up. Uh, we give it a tug and she's off. Move this, gonna remove this bolt here, this bolt here, and then we're gonna take these off with the help of somebody else to put the new ones on. With the new rear shocks on, she's looking a little spiffy. Now it's time to add the rear bar back on. And here is the rear bar back on. Next thing we're gonna add is we're gonna add highway packs. But the thing is, is I got these aftermarket ones and I've come to the conclusion that I don't like the way these brackets sit. So I'm going to try something out that makes it look a little bit more stock. We're going to take this bolt, we're going to put it in here, then we're going to cut this end off, and then we're going to twist the highway peg on so it stays attached right here. So there's the finished product for that. It actually kind of looks stock now that I did it this way. And they'll sit up like that. I could tighten this bolt if I want them to be tighter. Or I could just leave them like that. But I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with it yet. 
So for the brake system, it turns out that there was just a banjo bolt loose down here that was causing it to leak down the hose. So now that means that the brakes are good for now. We have to check them later just to double check everything and make sure nothing's seeping. Now let's add air to the shocks and see how they work. All right, she's all set up with about 15 PSI in the rear and about 15 PSI in the front because if you did not know, the front is an air ride as well, which makes this entire bike air ride as a 1982, which is absolutely awesome. All right, there will be more parts to come, but if you guys enjoy this, let me know.